think that we cannot, as a, an organisation, ignore India, which is why Global Questions is here, because India is one of the world's pivotal nations, of course. A lot of developing countries look to India to see how they have really transformed the economy here, um, technologically driven in many ways, and obviously it's also the world's biggest democracy. And with the general election looming sometime next year, the date's not been announced yet, uh, we thought it was a very opportune moment to come to India to just really explore um, what's going on in people's minds. And the question we're posing is, is India the next superpower, the world's next superpower? And that's what we want to really um, examine. When it first came along, traditional media was a little bit perplexed, you know, what do we do about this? Is it a threat? But actually, I think, in a way, it's been a shot in the arm for more traditional media, like the BBC, because in a world where everybody has an opinion, and, um, it, you know, comment is free, but we, for instance, at the BBC and other traditional media organisations, be they print or broadcast, can say, look, comment is free, but fact is sacred. And what we deal with are facts. Mm -hmm. And what we deal with is, you know, unbiased presentation of uh, news. We'll give you on the one hand this and on the one hand that. So we're not just slanting the news as so often you see in social media, where you've got, um, you know, fiction sometimes masquerading as truth or comment masquerading as fact. So I think the role of traditional media um, is it, not threatened actually by social media. It, it actually shows how much we need these trusted and tested organisations. And of course, traditional media uses social media now as well as, as a way of disseminating its uh, message. I think there's nothing wrong with um, a political leader using social media to communicate with voters or potential voters and, and citizens at large. I think that's a good thing, you know, because obviously um, audiences is what matters for um, anybody in the media. But that doesn't mean they should neglect the traditional media because the problem with social media is it's a one-way conversation mm. usually. And I think that that is one of the disadvantages of social media is that politicians use it to communicate their message but they don't necessarily use it as a means of dialogue. Whereas in an interview situation in traditional media, you can. I think the Indian media, you know, is wonderful. Uh, I really do. I, I think that, um, you know, use of language and the kind of, um, you know, variety of voices that you have is something that you really must cherish because, you know, as I said, a free media is a cornerstone of democracy and India rightly prides itself on being the world's largest democracy. So any threats to a free and transparent media here would be a matter of huge regret. So I would say keep on battling for your right to Article 17 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the free flow of information and free freedom of expression is absolutely important and if you feel in any way that um, this is uh, being compromised then I think that you have to stand up and uh, use your voice and say we will not accept this and be together regardless of political persuasion this goes beyond party politics this is a fundamental human right that everybody every country should have which is the freedom of expression